Hello and welcome to Let's Play Warhammer 40k Dawn of War Dark Crusade. We're on the second expansion now. In this game, they added the Necrons, as we see Necron Lord right here. They added the Necrons and the Tau. I'll be playing the campaign as the Necrons because I don't really like the Tau. So let's get started here. Also, the Necrons are kind of overpowered, so this probably won't take too long. You'll notice a lot of improvements in this game, such as the uh, it being full screen, like it has widescreen support, so it'll look a lot nicer. Don't know why I'm getting a little bit of lag here. Whatever. The planet Cronus. Beset on all sides by the tides of war, this once quiet colony became a savage battlefield. Seven armies clashed on this one world, each refusing to back down. Each convinced it was in the right. From beneath the sands of Cronus' central desert came the Necrons, ancient machines bent on eradicating all life. But another evil already had its eyes on the planet. From the depths of the war, the demonic forces of chaos arrived to enforce. He's got teeth on his neck. To oppose these fearsome powers, the planet's rulers in the Tau Empire sent their elite soldiers and sophisticated battle suits into the fray. From the mighty Imperium of Man came the Imperial Guard, there to secure Cronus for the glory of the God Emperor. Like a green tide, the Orc Horde descended on Cronus, caring little for others' claims and sowing destruction in its wake. The Eldar, Ancient enemies of the Necrons emerged from their webway to pursue their own agenda on Cronus. And last came the Space Marines, finest and most uncompromising of the Imperium soldiers. Seeing a world beset by aliens and heretics, they undertook a great purge. A dark crusade had begun. It could only end with the total victory of one of these factions and the total defeat of all others. Okay, we're gonna pick the Necrons here. I'm starting to think I left something running the in the background. I never get leg quit like this. The sands of Cronus for eons. Having retreated there at the end of a great war only hinted at in the histories of ancient races like the Eldar. Long before man even stood upright, the Necrons and the Dark Gods had retreated to their tomb worlds. But their slumber was not eternal. Eventually their genocidal deities awoke them again, driving them to purge the life that had spread across the galaxy during their sleep. On Cronus this awakening came when an archaeological team opened a mysterious crypt on the arid Thor Abyss Plateau. Most of the team died, but expedition leader Thomas Maccabee somehow became one of the mysterious Necron pariahs. Seemingly retaining a hint of his personality, he occasionally spoke for the silent army as it advanced. Price squads are pretty the powerful. The Lord of Cronus, the most ancient and powerful of the deathless creatures on the planet, promptly launched a campaign of extermination. His loathsome god, the Nightbringer, hungered for the deaths of all those of Cronus. Necron Lords are pretty overpowered in this game. He's going to be our campaign hero. Campaign's taking a whole new shift. It's not story-based anymore, it's like, command and conquer the areas. So move and take over. Now, the, as soon as I click anything, I bet the tutorial's going to kick into gear like it always does. Welcome to the yeah, I'd go away, I'm going to explain it. Okay, here's our world map. I believe there's a button here. That's better. Now you can see the team colors. I just start with my one little province, and you can see all these split province between every single race in the game. 
as I capture new, new places, I'll either get people from my honor guard who will travel with me to fight other places like these scarabs and these crypt warrior squads, or upgrades like increased manpower, which I believe is, yeah, squad and vehicle cap. And you win when you've conquered all of the area. And as you can see, we all start off at our flag, which is our uh, headquarters, our home city, whatever you want to call it. If you conquer one of those, you take the team out of the game. So let's get started. Um, where can I reach? Uh, warrior squad. Scarabs. Warriors. Warriors. I think I want to go here. I'm going to go after the chaos first. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here and take the manpower so I have a better uh, cap. Then take that so they have them kind of boxed in. I got flayed ones and warriors, and I'll move in. I might want to take this first, though, just so I have destroyers. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. It's my turn first, so I'll pick to go here. Only got a strength of one. And I'm already... I've blown halfway through my tea, and I just made this. Disappointing. Yeah, ever since I finished high school, I became like a total tea addict. <laughs> it went from, uh, like one cup a day to eight. My iron count is abysmal, needless to say. Oh, sorry about that. That was weird. It sounded like I had a cold, but I don't. Oh, okay, hotkeys finally work and everything, although I don't really know the hotkeys for this team. Now, one thing I find, well, one of the many things that I find very, very cheap about Necrons, uh, their warriors and scarabs cost nothing at all. Also, they only use power resource. They do not use any uh, requisition. Instead of requisition from requisition points or strategic points, they get um, speed. Their entire army, their build speed, everything goes up. So that can be quite powerful. The monolith is also where they make all of their units. So it's kind of like a Zerg hatchery in that way. Although I wouldn't really compare it to a Zerg hatchery other than that one way. They're very different. Okay, so I'm gonna just send my people out and explore early. You find very big maps, usually. I'm gonna start getting flayed ones because you can warp them in. I hear some scouts. They are no match. No match for a Necron Lord. In fact, all this stuff I can take on with my Necron Lord. As long as the AI doesn't freak out and it just stops building like that. It's weird. You finish that? Good. Lightning field. Yeah, I'm wreaking havoc already. Fortunately, Necron Warriors are very slow. That's why I'm gonna get flayed ones, so I can warp them. Gotta get a lot of generators early on. So, it looks like the enemy's base is somewhere around here. Oh, this might be it. Yeah, Necron Lords can teleport as if they aren't cheap enough already. Let's see if their soldiers come running as I smash their listening post. There they are. Oh, and there's their stronghold. Now I know where to attack. Get some flayed ones building. Gonna line up another generator. Yeah, they do get their resources slowly. 
since you need to spend power to get more generators with this team, it can slow down your economy. They have a very slow start, and they make up for that by having very strong starting units, as you can see from these Necron Warriors. I should really put this on hotkey. Works. Perfect. Has some flayed ones come out. Uh, Flayed Ones break morale quickly and are powerful in melee, but they march slowly. And I got them on the ropes already. Move and attack your way here. Move and attack your way here. Gotta have the Necron Warriors coming. Oh, totally forgot about this. Yeah, as you can see, I'm going pretty relaxed on everything right now. It's just, I can take this at a pretty relaxed pace right now, and it's not really going to bite me in the ass. Although I should start working on another monolith soon. Oh, what's that? They got a Chaos Lord. Let's gang up on him. Hey, Necron Lord, get over here and back him up. Oh no, we got him. This is too easy. Come on, guys, keep marching. That's some my warriors got here. Now all I need to do is take out all the headquarters to win. I should make this monolith a lot closer, but for now, I think for my second monolith I'm just going to build it in the base. Yeah, you actually can build quite a few headquarters for any given team, but it's very expensive and there isn't much of a point. And less your Necrons, in which it'll increase your population, your the rate at which you get power, the rate at which you can produce units, you get all kinds of little bonuses. Oh, and you can make more power generators in case it's such a big game that your normal max isn't big enough. Well, I've already got this one one, unless they're building another headquarters somewhere else. And I doubt they are. Now, a great thing about flayed ones, amongst everything else, is, uh... You can... Uh, get them to come out on the field, you can fully reinforce them, then put them back in a monolith to be warped out as a full squad. So you, they, uh, you can reuse them a lot. Oh yeah, this heretic's gonna save the day. It's gonna be 700 for the next monolith, so I think I'm good with just the two. Put this to a hotkey. I guess just bo have both of them constantly producing. Uh, it takes up three populations, so I don't have enough, but I've won anyways. Might as well just upgrade my obelisks while I wait. Because if we ever come on this stage again, I have the same buildings that I had here. I'll start off with those, so I might as well upgrade them as much as I can. I'll get you to build another generator. Same with you. If I start off a match, when if I start off a defense match with a bunch of generators, I have basically won. And I got a war gear for my first conquest. War gear is how you upgrade your commander. You get war gear from doing achievement-like things. Increases speed, reduces damage from ranged attacks. 
Well, that would be useful because they are pretty slow, but I think health is my priority right now. Health and damage. So maybe that. Not much of health boost, a little bit of range boost, good melee boost. But what about a new weapon? Hmm, actually the death grip is pretty good. This, on the other hand, is a pretty powerful upgrade to my ranged attack. Although ranged attack is pretty much just for closing in. Reveals infiltrated and increases health, that's good. Reinforced body, which is greatly increases health, increases health by a thousand and reduces melee damage I take. I'm taking that. Uh, Commander. I'd like to hire on these new crypt warrior squads to my uh, honor guard so they'll follow my leader. And I'll end my turn. Hmm. Most of the team, n none of the other teams even attacked. That's rare. Now I could, if I was suicidal enough, I could attack the uh, the Imperial Guard's headquarters right now, but I don't have a death wish. I'm gonna get the manpower, because I remember this is a very easy stage to rush. Oh yes, this one's so easy, especially with that new health upgrade I got. Because it's a very, very small stage and you start almost right beside your opponent. Right there, okay. Builder Scarab. Now, I can't reinforce those guys anymore, but I think they're more powerful than regular ones. I'll just get some scarabs out, take these points quickly. Maybe get... I guess a summoning core would be good. Although I don't really need it. Ah, oh, fighting the chaos, okay. Oh yeah, this new health is nice. You guys close in on the melee. And now, uh, plasma generators. Ah, finish that summoning core already. Flayed ones would be nice. As you can see, this is another very easy mission. Okay, got that done. I'll have it constantly producing flayed ones. And I'll get working on those obelisks so I can get stuff done faster. Oh, you're done that. So everything's 20% faster now, as we can see up here. Finished off their barracks. Now they're pretty screwed. Got a flayed one squad done. Oh, I forgot to hotkey that. Oops. Here we go. As if they weren't doomed enough. Yeah, never engage Necron Warriors in melee, unless you're a far superior melee fighter like a Knob or an Ogryn. Because, uh, Necron Warriors, they'll just knock you around. Yeah, I might as well kill one of these heretics. Then take out that listening post. 
I think I got another one done. This is too easy. 